This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right. The, um, I said at the end of the last lecture that we finished example one. It was absorption costing. But we are now going to look at the same example, assuming they were doing marginal costing. And like I said, it won't take many minutes. There are only really two things to learn. Uh, before, well, I'm going to set up an operating statement and look at the variances. Before I do, just let's set up the cost card again. Uh, the cost card, it's example one, same question. So the materials were 18, labour, standard cost 25 a unit, variable overheads 10 a unit. However, although with absorption costing, we then bring in fixed overheads. With marginal costing, we only look at the marginal, the variable costs. So the variable standard cost is three, one, one, fifty-three dollars. Uh, the standard selling price was seventy-five. And so we have a standard contribution per unit. Uh, 75 minus 53 is $22 per unit. And we spent enough time in earlier lectures discussing contribution, the profit before fixed overheads. Uh, can I also just before we do our operating statement, uh, calculate the total budget profit? The budget profit, well, first of all, the budget contribution. We are budgeting on selling 8,000 units. And the contribution should be $22 a unit, 176,000. Uh, for the profit, subtract the fixed overheads. And if you remember, uh, we had calculated, when well, we did it before, that the total fixed overheads were budgeted as 130,500. With marginal costing, of course, if you sell more or less, the contribution will be higher or lower. Fixed costs should stay fixed. But the budgeted profit is 45,500. Now, I'm not going to produce a full flex budget and everything. I'm not going to mess around. But just one thing before I discuss the variances. One thing that has nothing to do with variances at all, and you should already be happy with from paper F2, is that the profit there calculated using marginal costing is actually different from the profit we got when we were using absorption costing. If you've been taking it down and everything, if you look back, when we were using absorption costing, we got a budgeted profit of 56,000. Now I say again, this has absolutely nothing to do with variances at all. You should be happy already about the fact that a marginal and absorption costing will give different profits. It's not a question of uh, that's right, that's wrong. They do give different profits. We're not doing financial accounts. It's up to the management accountant to the company to decide which method they find more useful. And why do they give different profits? The only reason ever they give different profits is because the inventories are valued differently. Uh, with marginal costing, inventories are valued at the marginal cost per unit at the year 53. With absorption costing, they're valued at the full cost per unit, which if you look back was 68. And of course, if you value your inventories differently, 
automatically your different profits. And although it's so unlikely that this, what I'm about to write, will be relevant in F5, I can't carry on without actually saying it, the difference is always the change in inventory times the fixed overheads per unit. We're looking at budget figures here. So how much was the inventory going to change by? In budget, we were going to produce 8,700 and sell 8,000. So the inventory would increase by 700. If we absorption costing, the fixed overheads per unit were $15. And so 700 times 15 is 10,500. And is that the difference? Yes, it is. That's the difference between margin and absorption profits. It's the only reason ever, but they will be different. Uh, absorption margin will do give different profits. The only time they don't is if there's no change in inventory, then they will give the same profit, but otherwise they are different. Now, I'm sorry I keep repeating, but that has absolutely nothing to do with variances. The chances of that being relevant at F5 are almost zero. Because even if they had you do anything on marginal absorption, they're not going to have you do both. You know, if, it's, if you did something that was marginal, it's that answer. If you do it absorption, it's that answer. But again, I've, I couldn't not mention it. Otherwise, you know, if you'd forgotten the F2 business, it looks as though something's gone wrong. Anyway, back to marginal. Let's finish this thing off. The budget profit is 45,500. Uh, and again, management want to know why actual profit's different. We look at all the variances. I am going to write up again the operating statement. And as you'll see, only two things change. I'll highlight them. Um, otherwise, everything's as before. We start off with the budget profit, which we've just calculated. 45,500. Why is the actual profit going to be different? Well, as before, the first thing is the sales volume variance. Sell more units, clearly you expect more profit. However, this is the first of the two things that change. Just as before, we compare the actual sales with the budget sales. We actually sold 84, we budgeted on 8,000, we sold 400 more units. When we were doing absorption costing, more units, more profit, we costed at standard profit per unit. With marginal costing, because fixed overheads stay fixed, extra units mean extra contribution. We cost at the standard contribution per unit. Which, what was it? I did a minute ago. 22. favourable because there are more units. That gives us so far uh, 54,000. We're now expecting 54,300. So I think that's an easy one to remember. Sales volume. <clears throat> if it's absorption, cost at standard profit per unit. If it's contribution, it's standard contribution. Sorry, if it's marginal, it's standard contribution. Now what else? So we have the sales price variance. Well, same as before. I'm not going to go back through the workings. It was 16800 adverse. Drop the price. Obviously, less profit. It doesn't matter whether I'm margin or absorption. 
So that brings us down to 37,500. Then we do our cost phases. And they're all exactly the same as before for the same reasons, with one exception, which I'll come to. But you know, materials, if you spend more on materials, obviously it's less profit. Wouldn't matter whether margin absorption. So let me list them. Again, I'm not going to repeat the workings, we've been through them. Uh, materials expenditure variance was 3867 adverse. The usage variance. 612 favourable. A labour, the rate of pay variance was 2485 favourable. The idle time, 6500 adverse. The efficiency, 2000 favourable. Variable overheads. The expenditure, 852 favourable. Efficiency, 800. So all of them identical. The only uh, one that changes is fixed overheads. And why is it going to change? The reason we had the problem in the first place with fixed overheads was when we were doing absorption, we'd been charging at 15 a unit with marginal. That isn't a problem. Obviously, what is a problem is if we spend more or less, we have an expenditure variance. And just as before, for the same reasons, it's the difference between the actual expenditure and the budget expenditure. So exactly as before, we overspent by 3574. However, because we've not been absorbing the overheads, there's no volume variance. So I'll finish it off just to check, obviously, my arithmetic. But the only two things that change, you know, again, you won't be asked an operating statement, you could be asked extracts. And doubt fixed overheads would be relevant, but if it's marginal, it's the easiest variance of all, expenditure. Sales could be certainly be relevant. Uh, I don't think there's much to remember, sales volume. The number of units, different actuals against budget. Cost out of standard contribution, if it's margin. Standard profit, if it's absorption. Anyway, let's have them up and then we've uh, finished it. The favourable cost variance is 6749. The adverse variance is 13941. Uh, the net figure 7192, giving an actual profit 37500 minus 7192. 3308. And I suppose before I stop the lecture, I better make sure we're all happy that because here we've done it both margin and absorption, which we'd never be doing in an exam, we better make sure we are all happy why the actual profit is different. When we did it to absorption, if you look back, the actual profit uh, was in fact 37,808. Well, I've already told you, it's nothing at all to do with variances. Absorption and marginal will give different profits. The difference will be the change in inventory. And actual results, what did it change by? Actual, we produced 8.9 and sold 8.4, so 500 units times 
the fixed overhead per unit. Absorption charged them at 15. And so the actual profit could be 7,500 different. And is it? 37,808 minus 32, 7,500 different. Okay, well, sorry we had to have so many lectures on this, uh, but it's not a choice whether we do it all or we do none of it. Uh, however, we've been through all the uh, calculations for basic variances. You know, in the next chapter, we look at the more advanced ones which build on this. However, I'm going to have one more lecture because whatever variances you asked, whether the bits are basic, whether it's the further advanced ones or whatever, in section C, there'll always be some writing uh, to check that you really understand uh, about variances. But what I'm getting at, you see, look at the operating statement. We overspent 3867 on materials. Why? We don't know. There are lots of possible reasons. But you are asked to be able to interpret, to discuss the variances. It won't be a long lecture, but I do need one more lecture just interpreting, discussing the variances. So no more arithmetic for this chapter, but just one last lecture on, on this.